Hi there. Welcome back to Recorder 101, Lesson 27. Um, this is my second take on this. How are we doing? Well, we're doing our base dance burgerette. And I'm looking at some of the things that need to be considered. Uh, I have some notes I got all ready over the week to try and focus on certain things. So, first and foremost, beginnings and endings. You want both of them strong. The most important is your ending. You want it stronger than your beginning. And you want your endings, whatever piece you're playing, to really shine, to be the sort of thing where you know that you've got it. You, you don't need the music anymore because you get that sense of relief. I'm here. I've done it. Um, are people going to notice your mistakes? Probably not. Um, years ago, I played a very well-known piece uh, for a group of people, including several highly trained musicians, actually, they teach music at universities, different universities, and I made some fumbles while playing, and later I apologized. It was fine. I didn't notice anything. So if they, who probably teach this very piece and have done so many times, didn't notice, chances are with less familiar pieces, such as we play, um, medieval pieces, then your audience isn't going to notice either. But the reason you want your end so very strong is if you're somewhere in the middle, you begin to fumble around and go, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Especially if you're playing solo. You know you can go to the end, and you know which part of your end you can go to and you go and you play that and then you, mm -hmm, that's it. Okay, so this is the reason your end really, really wants to be strong. When you are practicing, I'm going to come back to the endings. Uh, when you're practicing, having a pencil that you can note on your music where you're having problems is a very good thing to do. I keep my music on on hard copy, but I'm considering um, having it digitally. Uh, that's going to mean trans... Oh, anyway, uh, that would mean an, uh, uh, some sort of digital pen that I could use. So depending on what you use, you could do that. So I've got areas where I'm struggling actually circled. The, one of the pieces, places, is our F. Now I have to reconsider everything. It's this. Yeah, it's our F down. It's not both middle fingers up. It's just one middle finger up. Half hold. That is in the fourth bar of music. A bar of music is separated by, let me put that down a second, two straight lines. Okay, that's the quarter note and a half note. And that half note after it, you'd get a breath. And we usually mark the breath with a check mark. So, and that would go just above the, the lines of music. You'd make a check mark to tell yourself to breathe. I'm saying check mark, and this is standard musical notation for woodwinds or any wind instrument, uh, which recorders definitely are. So, if we're looking, that's a place where you want a breath, and you want to think in terms of being in front of your mirror, half 
how do I look after that note? Um, do I look like I'm going, let, let me play this for you. You know, you don't want to look like that. Lots of people do. Uh, even professional recorder players are can be very can very can be seen taking noticeable breaths. Uh, what that actually implies is that there were sequences that they did not take the time to practice in front of that that little sequence right in front of a mirror and practice doing things properly. You can practice properly, and that's how. Now, the next place you may think, okay, because there's the check mark after that half note, so I'm going to look at the music for the next half note and put a check mark there. No. The next one, yeah, look for the half note, and it's got a quarter note after it the breath actually comes right there. So you've got the B. And that's the breath. So the two, the, the half and a quarter. But it's coming right on this, at the end of this sequence. I need to work on the fingering there because this, I, I'm going back to my C sooner than I should, so I need to circle that on my score to be sure that I get that right. Now, I've got the camera here, and I can look at my picture to see, am I breathing properly or am I making a big gasping breath? The other thing is I could use my mirror, but that would take me away from the camera. So this is a sequence that once you've got, that you know that. You can go, stand in front of your mirror, See how you take a breath there to get ready to go back to the next C. Okay. This is a little bit less tricky with the alto because all we're doing is ah, we've got our not this one. So you don't want the big gasp, but that's that's one that is a good one to practice because you're just coming down the scale very easily. And that, now I'm going to move directly to the end. The first 16 bars of music are beginning. Repeat at the end. They come for the last 16 bars of music. But as I said, you want your ending even stronger than your beginning. So for this, we're going to start with our very last note, which is a C. And again, I want you to go and study how you look in front of the mirror when you do this. And consider, how do I want to look when I reach my last note? You want to look confident. You want to look like relax, like ah, we've reached this end. Um, we've got that C and our altos. We're here. We're not trying to play this together, but again, the point I'm trying to get across is how you want to look. What is the previous note? It's 
the B. And if you just practice those two notes in front of the mirror, that's fine. But if you're looking at the score and you say, oh, what's the note before the B? What's the note before? Ah, it's a C. What's the note before the C? It's an eighth note C. And of course you don't want the little wobble in there. Why is that happening? Probably, and that's something you want to consider. Again, in front of the mirror, if you've got a wobble, you want to consider what's happening and why, and how you're going to make sure that your recorder isn't wobbling around. The bigger the recorder you have, more wobble. The tenor, even more wobble. I've got a place marked in another piece of music that I'm playing on my tenor that I've got specifically noted that the weight of it is causing me to wobble, and I'm paying attention to that. So making notes for yourself, making, like, watch the wobble here, looking at the mirror to see, is that where I've got a wobble? Very important. So carefully build up your ending note by note. You want to be sure that you've got that last note strong, determined, full of life. The note before it, yes. The note before it, yes, yes. So that you really could do that, that you could take this anywhere and play that note with confidence. Confidence and stage fright. Build up situations for yourself where you are playing for your pet. I'm not playing for my dog who's over here. Uh, he is there and he puts up with my soprano, obviously without howling. Um, so your pets, stuffed animals to Give yourself an audience that are looking at you. Maybe you, at first, want them on one side that you don't see them, but then bit by bit you move them so that you're actually seeing them. Um, stepping outside, opening a window and playing your last notes for the world. Of course, don't do it at an inconsiderate time, such as the middle of the night, unless you live way out in the sticks somewhere and nobody is going to hear you, um, because you don't want to be inconsiderate of your neighbors. So work in getting your ending strong, and the best way to do that is building up from the last note, then the second to last, and last, third to last, second to last, last, until you really know that if you get into trouble anywhere in your music, I can go to the end. I can play the end, and I'm done. And I can look like I'm here. Now, that only works when you are playing solo. What do you do if you're playing with a group. This particular dance, we've only got this as if it were a solo. You wait. You know your bars and you count. I'll talk about counting next week. I'm going to make a note here to talk about counting next week. Mm, now, the last thing that I want to mention in this piece and I think I mentioned it in Lesson 19, is our C-sharp. So we've had our D, which is just our middle finger. And our C has been thumb and middle finger. Our C-sharp 
is very much like our B, but our thumb is off. I'll get to altos in a minute. And the sequence here is and there's a rest immediately after that squiggly line is a rest. And you want to practice doing that. And also, while you're at the rest, and taking a breath, practice looking at the next note, and it's got not a hashtag, but a natural sign. And how do you make that natural one? Ah, put the thumb down. So while you breathe, and do this again in front of a mirror so that you're really watching yourself do this. So that's the soprano, tenor, C sharp. Uh, I have a little tiny sticky note on, stuck on my music to remind me of the C sharp for the tenor. So where have we been? We've been here with the and we have this next note would be C but we want the C sharp so we're in a good position we go. So it's only covering the half hold. T uh, altos, you may face a problem here because your hands can slip around. So consider where your fingers are. Really take the time to feel what that feels like. and breathe, and knowing that you've got that C coming. Okay, so that would be it. It's so simple in some ways to play this on our alto. So but that's your C sharp. Okay, anything else? I, the point I was making, so sopranos, tenors especially, when you are considering doing something different, even if it's going from here to here, with our notes, consider, and this again, you really helps to have the mirror. Consider whether your recorder is wobbling and take time when you're considering that if your fingers are really covering the notes. That's important too. And if they are, if your fingers are wobbling or your recorder is wobbling, find a way to notice this in the score and using your mirror work on that. Okay, we're getting, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for today. I don't want to make this much longer. So work with this and we'll see you next week. Have a good one.